Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. For today's lesson, we're going to uh, grind the lathe centers. These centers are getting a little rough shape. They're not real bad, but one has been dropped and uh, the end is uh, bent over just a little bit. Not that the very tip matters very much, and you don't want them so sharp that they're like a scriber, but we're going to run the uh, tool post grinder over them at uh, 30 degrees, which will give us the 60 degree center. Now I'm going to show you several different tool post grinders that I have. These are all Dumore grinders. I don't know if they're still in business or not, but they're like the premier name and uh, tool post grinders. And This little one here came in this box and, and it uh, will support only the shank type of uh, grinding wheels. And we got a couple of wrenches there. And this is all for external grinding and here's the grinder. It comes with this attachment here which will allow you to hold it directly in the lathe tool post. So that's about the size of a standard Armstrong tool post. This one is too small to do centers. It's really for very small work. And it seems to me it starts to chatter around and move uh, when you try something very heavy. So this isn't to me the tool we want to use to grind lathe centers. But it is a nice little unit runs at very high speed, it's like 25,000 RPM. I'd been doing another job in the Atlas lathe of grinding and uh, just occurred to me, I'll go ahead and show you how to uh, grind these centers, but this is still set up from the other one. And I'm not going to use this grinder. This again is a is a small, uh, my second smallest Dumore grinder and it has a two inch wheel. And we got a little diamond here for dressing. They of course run at very high speed as all grinders do and they mount directly in the tool post. I'm going to take this one off and put it on the bench and show you some other features of it. This grinder also comes in a fitted case, steel case, something long gone, shows you how old these things are. This is the one I just took off of the, the lathe. Notice that it's two speed here, we got uh, two sets of pulleys. I got it on the highest speed. And the motor itself runs at, uh, let's see if I can see it here, 10,000 RPM. Got a little oil hole here. These really are quite precision. Just a washer here to hold it on the tool post. And again, that's a two inch wheel. This apparently is a pretty old grinder because it still has two prongs which means it's probably from the late 50s or sometime in the 50s before they went to the grounded plug. This one also I believe I already mentioned that it's a little bit too small. You want as large a wheel as possible when you're going to grind something like this. You know I almost have to laugh when I look at this thing because this is pre-OSHA. Absolutely no guard on the wheel, no guards over the belt or the pulleys. And you know what? Back in those days they had something that was called personal responsibility. We didn't have Big Daddy watching for us. We watched our own fingers and you know what? I still got ten of them. Here's grinder number three, also a Dumore, and it has a two and a half inch wheel. A little bit bigger than the other one and that's the one we're going to use today. One speed uh, on the pulleys and it runs at 13,000 RPM without a load. It comes with kind of a universal T-nut that will fit many different sizes of tool posts. So that's I believe going to fit right into the Atlas. Not sure I ever used this before on the Atlas but I think that will fit. So we'll try it here momentarily. Now all of these grinders are for external grinding. Dumore also makes internal grinders and some of them I think are internal external and they have an extra quill. It's something I really haven't had a need to do is inside grinding. You can do some inside grinding with that very first one I showed you but I've tried it and it's a kind of I didn't have a lot of success with it and I think it's because of the diameter of the shanks of the grinding wheels. 
I have yet one more do more grinder bigger than this I forgot what size wheel it's out in the cold garage and I do not intend to bring it in so this is the one we're going to use you know what I misspoke several times I kept saying that uh, the tool grinder here would fit right on the tool post and I I did not mean that because it has taken the place of the tool post I meant to say that it is mounted in the t-slot on the compound as if it was a tool post. In fact, it's called a tool post grinder. And one other feature I didn't point out, and it's uh, on both of these little tool post grinders, that if you loosen this bolt here, you can raise and lower the entire unit on this shaft to find your uh, elevation or to get your wheel on center. And then you would lock this again because this would be used on various sizes of lathes you know that have different swings so you would you need it at a different height it just so happened that it was uh, uh, adjusted pretty close for this size lathe well this universal bolt wasn't very universal and didn't work at all it didn't fit in the uh, t-slot here of the compound so I had to make up a, uh, a bolt and a nut and then when I mounted it it wasn't quite high enough and the uh, belt pulley rubbed onto the back of the compound there so I had to put a spacer under here which raised this up just a little bit which was a good thing because now we're approximately on center with the wheel that is the center of this wheel is at the same elevation as the lathe center so that's that's a good thing now another thing you gotta note here is that There'll be grinding dust and abrasive particles everywhere when you grind, so you have to absolutely protect your lathe bed with rags. And then when we're done with the job, we're going to wash the uh, entire area down, make sure we pick up all that grit. Some people probably won't even let you grind on their lathes or anywhere near their lathes, and I'm almost that bad, but otherwise, you know, I've only got 10 years to live, so I might as well enjoy them. Now, if you're doing heavy duty grinding, you may need to wet your rags because the rags can start on fire or have a can of water close and then uh, you can always clean it up later and oil the, the ways do not go to bed with a wet rag on there now another thing you need to absolutely be sure that you're wearing full face protection this type of shield when you're doing this grinding safety glasses are not enough the compound is set at 30 degrees with the handle toward the back here and uh, we're going to uh, uh, do this as if we were turning a taper but actually we're grinding a taper by the compound rest method now we really need to dress the wheel as well for two reasons first of all as uh, in one of my other videos we talked about uh, truing up the wheel and sharpening the wheel and all of those good things so we do have a uh, do more grinder uh, dresser and there's the little uh, diamond right there and it can be put into different positions here and normally this clamps around a cylindrical work there's a little V here but there really isn't any way to hold this thing uh, in position when we're going to be grinding at a 30 degree angle so I made up a little uh, fixture to hold the diamond this took me about 15 minutes to make I already had this uh, rod here with a knurled nut and this little piece on the end. I think it's part of an indicator holder or something. Pushed it in my junk box. So there's the little diamond nib. And I made this little piece here with a set screw to hold that. And we can uh, loosen the nut and change the angle here. It'll swivel on here. This will be held in the three jaw chuck. That way I can pre present the diamond to the wheel at approximately. 30 degrees or uh, perpendicular to the wheel rather than at an angle to the wheel here's our setup for dressing the wheel this is the wheel I'm I have the camera overhead now here's the diamond nib and when I turn the uh, grinder on I'm just going to run the wheel back and forth across this way that will true up the wheel, it will bring it uh, into alignment with the true 30 degrees, same as the compound because I have only eyeballed the grinder when I mounted it on the uh, uh, compound so it could be a degree or two off 
resist the urge to turn the, the actual lathe on because you don't want this to spin around. Just so that I uh, didn't absentmindedly do that, I uh, put the lathe in back gears to lock the spindle. All right, I'm going to put my shield on and dress the wheel. I was always taught to run the lathe spindle in reverse when tool post uh, grinding. However, this lathe does not have a reverse, so I'm going to have to run it in forward. I don't think it's going to make much difference. And start the grinder. Here's the center. I put the uh, thread protector on there just so that uh, we wouldn't get any uh, dust on it. And remember that your spindle is probably the single most important thing about the whole lathe. And uh, we are now ready to grind. There we go. Glasses on, face shield on, and I locked the carriage. take a look at it. Now we'll take another pass. Still needs a little clean up. took two passes. Remember that these uh, centers are hardened. Some of them may even be high-speed seal, others are just high carbon. You don't need a point that's like a scriber. Matter of fact, 
if it's too sharp, I'll take a file or a hone and just knock that real sharp point off there because that is uh, not needed. There is no way to cool this off. We're not uh, running coolant like you would on a big cylindrical grinder. So take light cuts and make sure that you don't overheat it. And there's no heat here at all. I just finished the cut. Really no heat at all. And now I'll go ahead and grind my other centers. Now if you do not have a grinder, you can use carbide and uh, turn the center with the carbide. You won't get as nice a cut, but that's the way that some people do it. Probably not with high speed steel, but if it's a carbon steel one, you'll be able to take a light cut with carbide. But the grinder, of course, is the ideal way to do this. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.